Hi friends, welcome back to Farm Girl Diaries. My name is Caitlin and we have a busy day today. So today was actually supposed to be a complete wash of a day. So it's a very rainy flood watches in effect all day. And it is not. <laughs> it is actually um, overcast, but kind of sunny um, and very warm outside. So I had already planned to do what we're doing today. Um, so it would have been much better on a rainy day. <laughs> Um, but we're already here. I've already kind of committed to this day. So we are going to do it anyway, regardless of how nice it is outside and how much I could be getting done outside. So what we're doing today is we are doing a pantry restock. So I cook from scratch. Um, if you've been following me for any period of time, I cook almost entirely from scratch. And I like to find ways to make my life easier um, by, by kind of pre-making some things. So the biggest thing that I have is I have a ton, and we're going to talk about these more in a second. I have a ton of cake mixes and cookie mixes that I pre-make, um, at least with the dry ingredients. And um, I'm, these are all empty jars. <laughs> so they all need filled. And then I have things like my vinegar bottle is empty. My brown sugar is empty. So we're just kind of playing today where we're getting a lot of kitchen stuff done. We're restocking everything. We have a few things that we've harvested that we are going to kind of mess with. We're not going to do any real cannon today, um, but we are going to kind of get things in the freezer, get things kind of chopped up and kind of dealt with. Um, but my new toy just beeped. So we're going to pause this really quickly. My new toy beeped faster than I thought it would. So let's go into the kitchen and see what I got. Friends, I got an electric pressure canner. And I am so excited. So how this happened is I actually, um, which was a hair on that one. I got a rebate because these are expensive. This was about three hundred dollars. I ended up getting a rebate for my contacts, and so I thought, okay, this is great. I'll put the rebate towards the pressure canner. The pressure canner came on sale one day. I was like, oh, this is great. Well, of course, my rebate didn't work <laughs> for the pressure canner. Um, there were limitations on this stupid pressure canner or on the stupid rebate card. Funny who, at that point, <laughs> I had decided I was buying a pressure canner, so we bought a pressure canner. And this is my first time using it. I haven't used it yet, and I've been a little scared, I'll be honest. I'm not scared per se, but definitely, um, intimidated. And I haven't really had anything to pressure can yet. So today on this stock up day, I thought it would be a good idea to test the pressure canner, see how awesome it is, and then pressure can some dried beans because my bean storage is getting a little low. So I think I took my measuring cup. Yes, my measuring cup is in there. So we're gonna be doing northern beans because I love, love, love a um, ham and bean soup. So I have no northern beans on the shelf. So I'm gonna do northern beans. Oops. Oh my goodness, and I'm making a mess. And especially because I know I'm, I love some ham and bean soup, I definitely want to get some of these beans put back. Um, and this is also a great way to kind of buy the beans dry. Buy, dried beans are super, super, super cheap. And I'm trying to open that. Oops, my goodness. Work smarter, not harder. Dried beans are super, super, super cheap. Um, you can obviously buy beans canned at the grocery store and they're more expensive. For what you're getting so i do love to buy them like this and then can them myself so this is a great thing to do and i love the pressure canner or i love the electric pressure canner because i don't have to sit and baby this i can kind of get these guys going and then go do my own thing so when you're pressure canning beans and you have to have a pressure can you cannot do this with a water bath canner um it's super easy. It takes a long time, but it's super easy to do. And you start with dried beans. By the time the pressure can is done, your beans have softened up and they're ready to use. And they're shelf stable. And who doesn't love shelf stable? Um, 
So I'm doing pints. Um, just because I typically use pints more than I need a whole quart. So these are some of the, I don't think these are beans that I grill. I'm pretty positive I didn't grow these ones. But these are, beans are super easy to grow. I have a whole bunch of different kinds out in the garden right now. Um, so for pints, I'm doing half a cup of the dried beans and then the rest is water. And what's great about canning your own beans is you can salt them if you want. You can add spices. I know some people like to add spices to their black beans and make like a spiced black bean so you can open the can and they're ready to go. So it kind of just gives you flexibility to kind of do what you want. So I'm only doing three of each kind right now. Um, and again, this is such an easy project. And now, especially with the electric pressure canner, whenever I need these, I can easily go, easily go can more without too much of an effort on my part. So I just put half a cup of the dried beans and then I'm just topping them off with water that brings it up to about an inch of headspace. I know one of these, this one has a little bit too much. There we go. Okay. And that is it. That is how simple it is to can beans. So I'm going to go ahead and get my lids on here. I'm going to get these in the pressure canner. And that is one project done. And what's nice about this is this is a project that um, was super easy to get done, obviously, and now we don't need to. Um, it was, and it took, it didn't take any time at all. And now this can be going while we go and fill our jars in the dining room. So that's always nice. Have something working for us while we work on something else. Okay, now let me show you what these look like before they're canned. And then when they're done being canned, they're going to fill this whole jar up. So I've been following the directions closely for this pressure canner. I typically don't warm my jars before I can, before I can anything. Um, but I'm following the directions for this. One hundred percent of the way. OK, so place cover on canner. And then you put this down and you lock that. Okay. Okay. So I guess it's going to beep when it is ready to go. Okay. So we'll wait for that to beep. Let's go back into the dining room. Okay. So some of the things we're going to be filling up there, the jars that we have to fill up, baked oatmeal, spice cake mix, white cake mix, chocolate chip cookie mix, cornbread, brownie mix, baked oatmeal. I think I said chocolate cake mix already. Those are what we have to fill up. And what I like about all of these is these are um, already dried out mixed ingredients. And on the front, I have what the item is. You can see that, what the item is. And then on the back, I have the dry mix and the wet ingredients. So when I'm, it's just like a box cake mix. When I want to make this white cake mix, I go grab this from the shelf. It already has all the dry stuff mixed in. And here's the wet ingredients. And then I know how long to bake it at. But if you wanted, you could actually add in the instructions. But that I'm fine with. So I have that on almost all the jars. The spice cake mix doesn't have it. And the cornbread doesn't have it. So I need to look those up. Um, so yeah, I like doing this because I think it makes life easier. 
So I tried to get out the ingredients I could think of. I've missed quite a few. So we're gonna go do this in sections. I think we're gonna do the cake mixes first because they require a lot of the same ingredients in the brownie mix. Okay. And we'll come back for the baked oatmeal and the cornbread. I thought I said chocolate chip cookie mix, but I don't see that now. I do have... And so the other two mixes that I had that we don't need to do today, we have a chocolate chip cookie mix and we have a snickerdoodle mix and we made these together i'll try to remember to link this that video below um we made those together a couple months ago so this is quite more than enough for us to do um in one foul swoop okay we're gonna get started with the chocolate cake mix so for the chocolate cake mix we're gonna start with one and three quarter cup of flour so I love having these on hand. This is a great way to cook from scratch, but then not need to rely on a boxed mix because box mixes we all know are terrible. They're filled with junk that nobody wants in their system. And this way, you've kind of made the work easier for yourself when you need a cake or whatever, cake, cookie, brownie, whatever. So one three quarter cup. I put in each jar. I like to have two jars put back for everything. And so typically, I've never really let it go this bad where I'm refilling everything at once. Typically, when I run out of the second jar, I will refill both jars. So this just these um kind of jars just make life easier I think across the board um so I'm just going to do all the flowers together um, at the same time I might need to go fill up this flower container which is what the purpose of today is anyway so that's fine um we're moving on to the spice cake mix the spice cake mix is two and a half cups of flour And you can keep these in, I need to get this filled up. You can keep this in these quart jars like I have, and I like them in my pantry this way. Or you could uh, put them in baggies. Baggies would work and then you could stack them really nicely. I need to get some more flour. Okay. Another two and a half cups. And I pulled out the dining room table for this project today. I feel like we needed the extra space. And then it gave me a good time. Come on. We're going to have flour all over this table by the time we're done. Um, but this gave me a good time, too, to wash my table runner that I always have on this table. So it may not be the rainy day that we were promised, which would be perfect to do a project like this. But I'm not going to complain. We're still going to get a lot, a lot done. And that jar is not big enough. Hmm. Okay, we're only gonna make one. <laughs> we're only gonna make one spice cake mix. Because the last recipe I had, I could fit it just in one pint jar. Um, clearly, I am full and I'm overflowing. That's that's not this recipe. So we're only gonna do one spice cake at a time. So um, let's take some of that flour. We'll do some of that flour into the brownie mix. The brownie mix calls for two thirds of a cup. So let's put it in here. There is nothing that I don't do in this life that I don't make a massive mess doing. There's just nothing. This is liquid and that's fine. <laughs> I can't find my two-thirds cup or my third cup, so this is fine. Okay, so into the brownie mix, we're doing two-thirds a cup of flour. And then the white cake mix calls for a cup and three-quarter. Okay. 
So that is the flour for those items. Let's go to the chocolate cake mix. One and a three quarter cup of sugar. I just filled up the sugar, so the sugar is ready to go for this task. Once you kind of realize all the stuff that you could do, oh my goodness, that was three quarter cup. I'm being an idiot. I can't multitask. Um, what I was saying is when you realize all the stuff that you can do kind of ahead of time to help future you, it is so nice to spend this time. We spend, this is probably going to take about an hour. We spend about an hour. And then we have so much done, checked off our list. I love it. Future us is going to really like us. So that requires brown sugar. So we're going to, that's the spice cake mix. We're going to skip that for now. The brownie mix requires one and a quarter cup of sugar. Remove to the brownie mix. And at the end, I will give you all of the ingredients, what's included. So that if you decide you want to do this, you know what you have to do. White cake mix, one and three quarter cup sugar. This is getting really sunny out. <laughs> I definitely think I've picked the wrong day to do this. That's okay. Okay, keep following the chocolate mix. Let's go for the cocoa. We need half a cup of cocoa. And my cocoa is here. And I have more because I knew I was going to run out. Mm, cocoa smells so good. I know the brownie mix needs cocoa. We'll do eight. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Half a cup of cocoa. And I think that's it for our cocoa. So while I have this already cocoaed up, let me put this into my beautiful cocoa. I love these blue jars. I try to use them for everything I can. And I think, I think they just look so pretty on a shelf. So while we're filling stuff up, let's get the cocoa put into my cocoa jar. I'm going to go rinse this off and dry it real good. So I washed it because I didn't want to get the cocoa in anything else, but I want to make sure I have it really dry so that none of that gets in the final product. So while we are on the chocolate cake mix and the brownies, let's just keep going with these guys so that we can get these done. I need one teaspoon of bacon powder and one teaspoon of bacon soda for both of the chocolate cake mixes. So one, two, that's bacon powder, bacon soda. There we go, that was a little shy. We'll do a little bit more. There you go. And one teaspoon of salt for the chocolate cake. And I think that's it for the chocolate cakes. So that for the chocolate cake total, it was one and three quarter cup flour, one three quarter cup sugar, half a cup cocoa, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and one teaspoon salt, and it fills the jar completely. When you wanna add your wet ingredients to it, it's two third cup oil, quarter cup milk, three eggs, and one tablespoon of vanilla. So we'll put that to the side, and we'll get lids on that. Let's finish up my brownie mix. We need an eighth of a teaspoon of bacon powder. There you go. 
half a teaspoon of salt. I already have um, one brownie mix, which is why, sorry, it's still full, so I'm only doing um, one of these. One teaspoon espresso. I have espresso back here at my coffee bar. And the espresso really gives it such a good chocolatey flavor. Um, I did the sugar, one quarter cup sugar, and then chocolate chips. And I don't know what my chocolate chips are. I haven't needed to use my chocolate chips in so long because I have all the cake mixes done. I forgot where my chocolate chips were. And they were in the pantry where they should have been. <laughs> So I just like to add a little bit of chocolate chips into it. Want need more than that. And that is my brownie mix. So again, for that recipe, we had two third cup flour, half cup cocoa, one eighth table, one eighth teaspoon baking powder, half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon espresso, one and one quarter cup sugar, and then chocolate chips. And the wet ingredients are eight tablespoons melted butter. I actually think I like to cut that back to six tablespoons of melted butter, two eggs, and then a dash of vanilla. So we got two chocolate cake mixes and a brownie mix done. Let's wrap up our white cake mix next. So, so far we have one three quarter cup flour, one three quarter cup sugar. We need two teaspoons bacon powder. And one teaspoon salt. And then the wet ingredients for this are two third cup oil, one quarter cup milk, three eggs, and one tablespoon of vanilla. Um, and again, when you go to use these, you just follow any traditional cake bacon recipe. If you do muffins uh, or a cake, I typically do about 375. And then I typically start checking and poking them um, every after like 15 to 17 minutes. Um, I just eyeball everything. <laughs> okay. We're at the spice cake mix now, and this is going to require a little bit more ingredients. So to the spice cake mix, we're going to do two teaspoons of bacon powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. I got to fill up my cinnamon container today, too. This is just such a great day, just because we are so low on so many things. Getting get everything topped off for fall. When we can really get into our fall cooking and our fall bacon, that will be fun. Um, one teaspoon ginger. One half teaspoon nutmeg. I didn't grab the nutmeg. Let me go find my nutmeg. Nutmeg. So we need half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Like I said, I did a tablespoon of ginger. Or teaspoon of ginger half teaspoon nutmeg, and then it calls for a half teaspoon cloves. I only have whole cloves, so I'm not going to add the cloves. And then we need one and three quarter cup brown sugar. Well, my brown sugar container does need filled up. But when I made brown sugar last time, so I make my own brown sugar, it's just white sugar with some molasses. I get out my, oops, I get out my KitchenAid, my hand, my stand mixture, and I just add sugar. And like a tablespoon of molasses, I think, to four cups of sugar. And get it all mixed up until you have brown sugar. And I made too much. I stored it in a, oops, in a quart jar. And I'm happy that I did that because I really don't feel like making sugar, making brown sugar today. So this is great. So I'm going to use this. So hopefully it'll get me through today. And then we... Hopefully it'll top this off and I won't need to do that today as well. So I need one and three quarter cup brown sugar. So that's our spice cake mix. And then when we're ready to add, uh, ready to cook this, we're gonna add one cup oil, one cup applesauce, four eggs, and two teaspoons of vanilla. So, easy peasy. Look at that, we are just knocking things off the list left and right. Let me get the rest of this brown sugar into this container. And then this is great because I don't have to, it probably filled it up about halfway. So at least I hope that's not something we need to do today. Because I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> okay. Oh, 
our electric canner is beeping. Let's go see what we do next, because I don't know what we do next. Okay. Unit is beeping. When Benson expires, unit will start beeping. Put regulator on. Okay. So regulator is at can. Yep, it's at can. Press play to advance cannon. Okay, so we've messed up already. <laughs> These beans need to go for 65 minutes. And I skipped the step where I was supposed to change this time to the processing time. So we are going to need to let it go. So at this point, it's going to go on its own. And I'm going to need to start the whole cannon process over again when this is done. So we're going to let that go and we'll come back when this is completely done and then we'll re can it because we messed up. And this is why I wanted to do um, uh, beans with that because beans just, I think, make it a little bit easier. Oops, that was the wrong thing. Beans make it easier for, I think, the first go round, the first test. In. I put flour in my sugar. So we got that out. Okay. Next, let's talk about our baked oatmeal. So I love to have baked oatmeal on the shelves. Again, just drop it, and then you can add whatever fruit you want to add to this. So, again, it makes just a, a quick breakfast very, very easy. So, to this, I'm going to need to fill up my oat container. We're going to add three cups of oats for each container. So this is a half cup measure. So six of these per container. And my oats are filled up. We're going to be using these to make granola in just a little bit. So to a baked oatmeal, one cup of brown sugar. I think I can put my cocoa, my chocolate chips away. I think we're done with them. One cup of brown sugar. So one cup brown sugar, two teaspoons cinnamon. I gotta go get cinnamon. That's about a tablespoon and a half. Let's go get more cinnamon. <laughs> okay, two tablespoons of cinnamon. Okay, that beep was just to tell me that it has now reached pressure and it's going to start counting down. So I will say the one thing I don't like about that pressure canner right off the bat is there's no way to stop it. Um, I obviously realized I put the wrong time in and I can't stop it. I, could just, I guess I could unplug it, but I don't know if that would mess up the machine at all. Um, so it, there's no way to stop the cycle. You have to let it run its full course. And it says to cool down takes about an hour and a half. Um, so it might be... They might not get done. They might get done. I really don't know. <laughs> so we'll, um, we're going to forget the electric pressure canner for now. That did not get started off on a good foot, all because they missed one little step, and that really sucks. So we'll keep our eyes on um, that pressure canner. Maybe we still get it done today. I don't know. Next, I need two teaspoons of bacon powder. One teaspoon salt. And then the rest of the ingredients are two eggs, one cup milk, half cup melted butter, and two teaspoons of vanilla. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, next, cornbread. Cornbread I don't have my recipe for. So to our cornbread, we're going to do a cup of flour. Oh my God. Could I make any more of a mess at this point in time? <laughs> One cup of cornmeal.
two thirds a cup of sugar. Okay, we had a little bit of a catastrophe. <laughs> so I was doing the cornbread and I stopped the video because I couldn't find out, I couldn't find my baking powder. I put, I accidentally put flour into my sugar container. So I dug out all that out, that's in this. And this I planned to use for the cornbread. Instead of dumping this, I dumped my bacon powder. So I think the one I dumped the bacon powder into is this one. So I'm going to toss this one away. And I'm out of bacon powder now. So I tried to dig a little bit of what I thought was the bacon powder in that one to put into my, my complete cornbread one, which is this one. Um, so <laughs> this may have bacon powder in it. It may not. This is going to be a fun surprise. So what this was, was one cup flour, one cup cornmeal, two third cup sugar, and three and a half teaspoons of bacon powder. I definitely didn't put three and a half teaspoons. I put two teaspoons. So this one, we'll see what it does. But the rest of the ingredients are one cup milk, third cup oil, and one egg. And when I make cornbread, I always love to add pepper jack cheese, honey, spicy honey, garlic honey, um, pepper flakes. I love to add things to spice up your cornbread. So I'm hoping that this is still successful, but I wasn't able to do that second um, cornbread because I think it's, I think a cup of it is bacon powder. Um, and I use the bacon powder you buy that is aluminum free. So it's a little bit more expensive. So I'm kind of annoyed. Luckily it wasn't a whole jar, but I am kind of annoyed that I did that. So I'm glad that our um, bacon, I think is, is done for today. We are going to make some granola later. And I wrote that down somewhere. Oh, here. And it, the recipe luckily calls for bacon soda. So thank goodness <laughs> we got everything else done before I dumped the bacon powder out. So I'm going to go get this mess cleaned up and I'm going to put my jars away. But let me bring you close up and show you what we got. We got one jar of our spice cake mix. Um, and that's okay. How I use the spice cake mix is I make a zucchini bread jam. And I haven't made it for about two years. But the recipe comes from Rachel at that 1870s homestead. And I actually just made a whole bunch of them um, about a week ago. And I whip this up. I add the zucchini bread jam into this. And then I add oil. And actually, I don't think I add oil. The zucchini bread jam is moist enough. I just add a couple eggs, um, maybe a little bit of oil, maybe half a cup of oil. Um, and then bake it. And it's delicious. Um, with a cream cheese frosting. With this, the spice cake and the zucchini bread jam. And then a cream cheese frosting. It is a delicious, moist cake. Um, so I really enjoy making them. Um, I have two chocolate cake mixes. I only needed one white cake mix, one brownie mix. Unfortunately, only one cornbread mix. And then two baked oatmeal. And again, this is great if you're a mom of, of kids. You need a quick and easy breakfast. Whip this up the night before. Whip this up in the morning. I just dump this into my pan, add the wet ingredients of the two eggs, one cup milk, half cup melted butter, and two, two teaspoons of vanilla. Um, I stir all that in the vessel that I'm going to bake the dish in, and then I add fruit or granola or whatever else you want to add to make this baked oatmeal just delicious. So that's two, four, six, eight, eight um, baked goods that we're going to put in the pantry for future use. The canner is done. The canner is cooling down. So I don't know when I'll be able to get to the canner, but we are going to try to get that reprocessed today. So I'm going to get everything put away. I'm going to get this table wipes down, and then we're going to move into the kitchen and I'm going to do a couple other small projects. Uh, but first, let's get all of this put away. Okay, so we got them all put in the pantry. So I need. Um, more space for all of my mixed goods or all of my dried goods. So this is my pantry that has all of my dry goods completely. Cornmeal, grits, all the flours, the salts, the pastas. This holds basically all the things that I make um, all of my food from scratch with. Um, I have another um, cabinet that eventually I want to get to put all of my cake mixes and all my, my pre-mixed items like this and have that be a completely separate small cabinet. But for right now, this is going to have to do. So I have them um, two deep. Um, obviously, I have a spice cake, but I only have one. And then what I also have on this shelf is I have my 
uh, dehydrated fruit powder. So I have raspberry and blackberry and strawberry. And this one needs to be ground up. It's still just in dehydrated pieces. Um, but I put these on the shelf too. And this is, they're great to use to flavor icings. Or what I buy from um, a local Amish market is these little, um, it's called Holiday's Harvest Barn. And it's like a little fruit dip. But this is a lemon raspberry cheesecake mix. And I don't see why we couldn't make some of these ourselves, especially with some of our fruit powders that we have. Um, so this is kind of like my whole bacon shelf. And I'm happy that we got this stocked up because we really needed to get it stocked up. But now if we look at my table, my table is a mess. There's flour everywhere. So let's go ahead and get it cleaned up. I got the table cleaned off. Now I just need my wash to be done, my table runner to be dried, and then we can set that table back again. So that is um, a cleaned table and a cleaned room. So now we're gonna move into, we moved into the kitchen, and we need to process some of our harvest. So this is a very ugly looking cabbage. Um, it's tiny, it's little, it's sturdy, it's a mess. Um, but we want to get it all cleaned up. So this is actually firmer than I thought it was going to be. The outer leaves are, are bad, but the inner leaves are better. It's, and it's still crisp. So what I was going to do, and I'm not going to do it anymore because it's actually in better shape than I thought it was, is I have a, a bowl of cold water. I was going to let this cabbage soak in in order to get it um, to kind of crisp back up. If you have a soggy vegetable, the way you can um, kind of revive it is to let it soak in water for about 10 minutes. As such, this is actually better than I thought it would be. So I want to go ahead and I want to get this guy washed completely. And then we're going to slice this up for the freezer. The other day, um, with the other cabbage, I just harvested two cabbages from my garden. Um, I think I planted six and I had a slug issue this year. So I'm grateful that I got two. I didn't think I was going to get any. So I got two. I just planted some more for our fall garden. Um, but the other one I did, so what I typically do with my cabbage, let's start there. So I just slice this cabbage and I cored it. What I just, what I typically do with my cabbage is I make sauerkraut. Um, I had to buy my cabbages for my sauerkraut this year, but I did get my sauerkraut made. I got about eight quarts, and that's going to be more than enough for a year for me. And then I also like to do a pickled coleslaw. Um, I love to have pickled coleslaw. The obvious way to eat that is as coleslaw, but I love to add it into dishes where you need, it, it's a pickled coleslaw. So it, it's great when you need a little bit of acidity. Um, when you want that cabbage crunch, I love to add it to egg roll bowls, to sushi bowls. Um, a lot of Asian dishes I add it to. Um, I put it on Italian subs. It's delicious. So I didn't want to necessarily process these cabbages into anything because they were really small. Like they're not big at all. So I determined that these were just going to be for fresh eating. So the other night I made a fried rice bowl. I did fried rice. And I did sliced shredded cabbage. Um, I had cauliflower that came out from the garden, so I put cauliflower in it. Um, it was scrambled eggs, and it was turkey, canned turkey from a leftover project I did before. Um, carrot and carrots. So almost every, and onions. And almost everything aside from the carrots came from my own garden, so that was exciting. So what came from my garden was the cabbage, the onions, the cauliflower um, came from my garden. So I thought that was exciting. So I and I and it was delicious. That was absolutely delicious. So I decided I would take this second cabbage and shred it. I've never sh like sliced and, sh and shredded cabbage for the freezer before. So this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. Um, but I thought that this would be good to add to the freezer. And then if I want to make fried a fried rice bowl uh, in the future, I have some of my cabbage ready to go. And if I wouldn't have cabbage, I would use my pickled coleslaw. I think that just gives a different, little bit of a different taste, but it's delicious. 
Um, so that is ready for the freezer, so that's great. Let me empty this guy. And these apparently are a little wet, so hopefully I remember what they are. But that's two bags that are going to go into the freezer, and I hope that they, they freeze well. Um, I know you can freeze cauliflower steaks. If these had been bigger cabbages, I would have frozen them into cauliflower steaks to have cauliflower steaks in the future. And I might try to do that with any of the cabbages that I planted for the fall. So first things first is I have banana peppers and the banana peppers are really starting to roll in. Um, they are a little small this year, but that's great. That's well, that's okay. Um, they're, when they're smaller, they're better for pickling anyway. Um, but these guys here, what I've been doing is I've been chopping these and just adding these to a freezer bag. Um, what I like to do with these is I like to make pepper packets. So it's onions, um, it's onions, peppers, and it's all the different types of peppers, banana peppers, bell peppers, um, a couple jalapeno peppers, orange gummy peppers. Um, and then I do slice some okra. And what's great about this is this is something I can do right now. Um, and I do, I harvest what I harvest, I slice it up, and I throw it in these freezer bags. And then at the end of the harvest, when I'm done harvesting all of the ingredients, I take all of my bags of chopped food, oopsie, and I throw it into a big bowl, toss it all together, add in my, my fresh onions, because I don't have onions growing. There is a worm on this sky. Look at this worm. He is the color of the banana pepper. Look at him. So I take these and I toss it in a bowl, add the onions, and I do like to add onion greens and garlic greens if I have them. If I grew them this year, I will add the greens. And then toss in a bowl and I portion them out in individual bags. And then these make a great side dish. Just the, the whole mixture, all the peppers, the onions, the okra in a bag or in a pot, add butter and some seasonings. That's a great side dish. I love to put these in a soup. I make a delicious soup with these with these pepper packets. So it's one of my go-to items and I really enjoy it. I really, really enjoy it. So now what I'm gonna do is make sure there is a, I'm gonna cut out the hole here. Oh, this guy has a lot of holes. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. He has quite a few holes in him. He might've been where the caterpillar came from, but I'm gonna go ahead and Inspect these peppers now for a hidden caterpillar. That caterpillar just blend, blended right in with the skin. I am just going to slice them up now to add them to my freezer bag. Um, I prefer, as my banana peppers start coming in, this is the way I preserve them. Um, it kind of, you know, in the beginning of July, you don't have too much coming in. So this is a great way to kind of spend 10 minutes and do it but then come the end of august and september your peppers are really typically putting out but for me at least for me that's when my peppers really start putting out um and then i can do other things with my peppers i can focus on fresh eating them and snacking with them i can do big cannon projects with them because now i have a boatload coming in at one time um this is just a great way to do a little bit at a, at a time to have a big impact later when you have more time to deal with them. So there's a buggy hole. Okay, we're gonna not eat this one. This one's gross. Say no to grossness. That simple when that quickly we got all of these guys sliced up. We're gonna add them to this bag. I'm just gonna throw these back in the freezer. And then I have a bag of jalapenos that I'm going to add my jalapenos to. I should take the stems off, but I don't. <laughs> So these will get turned into either cowboy candy or jalapeno relish. 
once I get a good batch of them. And again, once the peppers are coming in like one or two or three at a time, they freeze great and you can process them. I typically like to take my cowboy candy or my jalapeno relish um, in the winter time when I'm not so busy and I have a lot more downtime. Okay, our last project of the day, we still have to come back to the electric canner. It is gonna take that full hour and a half to cool down. So that's gonna be some time before we get to that. But now we're gonna make granola. So part of the pantry restock is I need some homemade granola for in my yogurt in the morning. So I'm gonna move this to the side for now. That's some more produce that we're gonna just eat fresh. I wanna go ahead and get my oven preheated to 375 and we're gonna make some granola. So in my bowl, I'm gonna start with four and a half cups of oats. I don't add any dried fruit to my granola. And this is granola to go on yogurt. So I don't even add like candies or anything like that. Um, but you can absolutely add whatever you want to add. Dried fruit. This recipe does call it for coconut flakes. Um, you could add like chocolates and other nuts. And, you know, granola is something you can really kind of play with and do whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just, I want the nuts for my yogurt, that's it. Or not the nut, but I just want the granola basically for my yogurt, okay? Next is half a cup of sesame seeds. And then a third of a cup of flaxseed. Now, I'm going to give this a quick rinse. This is all I'm going to add to mine. You can add pecans, you know, almonds, walnuts, again, the dried coconut flakes. <laughs> this is all I'm going to add to mine. I think that's going to be delicious. So let me put these away, and then we're going to turn our attention to the wet ingredients. I'm going to do one-third-ish cups of butter. I have a big old block of butter left. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that butter. Whatever this is, is gonna be enough. I'm very much not a measure, I'm just an eyeballer. Come on off the paper, there you go. I'm gonna add that in there and get that melted. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my brown sugar, a third of a cup of brown sugar, and a third of a cup of honey. Oh, and get that mixed. So I'm just going to let that butter melt, let that sugar dissolve, and then we add a dash of vanilla and three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. A little bit of a slight boil, so I'm going to turn off the heat. I'm going to add in a dash of vanilla. Stir that in. And then three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Now I'll be honest, I don't know what this does, but I follow directions. <laughs> okay. Stir this together. Oh, it made it frothy. Let me. Oh, interesting. I would have showed you. It was just, it looks like a caramel. And that bacon soda obviously had a reaction. And it turned it almost into like a marshmallow. That is so interesting. Okay, we're going to add it into our granola. That is so interesting. I never, I never made this before, so I never expected that. I 
I'm gonna get the granola all tossed. Let's go ahead and dump her out. Okay. I'll put it in the oven for eight minutes at 375. We'll get it out, we'll toss it, and I'll put it in for another eight to 12 minutes. Okay, friends, it's later the same day. Um, we got our granola out of the oven, and we had to let it cool completely, and we got um, probably four cups or so. I think it ended up being about five cups of granola, so that's great. It tastes really good. Um, this isn't a snack in a granola, but it tastes good. It would be a snack in granola if I added, like, dried fruit, maybe some M&Ms, some chocolates. Something. Then it would be really good as a as a, like a trail mix. Um, but as such, this is just to go in yogurt and it's gonna be delicious, I think. So with that, um when you put it in the oven on a baking sheet, make sure you put parchment paper down. I have I tried it and put it away. <laughs> I have stone, Pamper Chef stone cookie sheets. So I, but I had to scrape it off. It didn't, it wasn't too bad. It did make a mess in my kitchen. But I had to scrape it off of the stone. So if you uh, go to make that recipe, use parchment paper. <laughs> um, we did get our canner to run the, uh, we eventually did get our canner to run and to finish canning our beans. And, it is very nice. <laughs> um, once you do get it set the right way, um, it ran completely with and finished and cooled down with no help from me. So I liked that. I liked that I literally set this and forget it. And then it tells you when it's done. It tells you um, what to do. And it is very self-explanatory. So I think once I made that first little mistake, I think... We won't make any more mistakes again in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these beans out and then I'll show you what they look like. So these are gonna, just, again, like I said, just gonna be great to go on our shelves um, and we will use them in the fall. And as easy as this was, we could 100% do this any, any day. Easy peasy, no harm, no foul. So, these are my navy beans. I thought they would take up the whole um, pint, but obviously they didn't. There is some room left in there, which is fine. Absolutely fine. Some beans, if you add too much, they will expand and take up the whole space. I think that's what happens. Well, no, even the, the black beans, I have a little bit more space. Um, the black beans are harder to see. Let me see if this one maybe. So you can see, I could get my light in there you can't really see um but the black beans do come up the whole way um and there is still a little bit of liquid in there which is good so those i'm gonna let cool for the next uh couple hours and then i'll put them away in the evening or i'll put them away tomorrow put them on the shelves and then we have beans dehydrate or hydrated ready to go this was a really great purchase i'm really excited that i have that um I still obviously have my big pressure canner. Um, I'm not going to get rid of the big pressure canner, but this is nice, especially for small batches and to put things in here um, when I want to like do other things and not heat up the kitchen. I don't have to turn on my stove and heat up my pressure canner. And this will also work as a water bather. You can only water bath pints in here, but it's another way that we wouldn't heat up the whole kitchen. So I do like that idea. Um, so I think that's a win. So I just want to thank you guys for coming along with me today. Um, we are we we stocked um, the house. I didn't get my vinegar that was on the list. My vinegar restocked. I didn't get that restocked, but I have it sitting out because I got to do it. I just don't have a big kitchen, and this product does take up like the whole workspace that I typically use. Um, so that's okay. We'll get the vinegar before we go to bed. Um, but I feel great that we got 
all those dry mixes packed up. Um, aside from, you know, dumping out my baking powder, <laughs> I feel like that didn't go too terribly bad. And we have them ready to go into the fall. So this is a great time, I think. Um, I do have a ton of harvest coming in. We, we do have a lot going on. But when you have those down times, I think this is a great time to prepare for fall and winter. In the fall and the winter especially, I do a ton of bacon, um, a ton of more uh, in-depth cooking. I've, I've just been thinking actually recently, I'm, I'm hungry for, like my, my girlfriend makes, um, they're called Bud's Meeples. And it's, um, I think it's her grandfather or her husband's grandfather. It's a grandfather that makes these meatballs over mashed potatoes. Anywho, all that to say, I'm very, I'm like hungry for these meatballs and I want to make these meatballs. But all I can think is like we're in August, we have so much fresh produce coming in, you need to eat the fresh produce. So I do transition my food from like fresh eating a ton of vegetables, ton of like salads and stuff like that to over fall and winter, more heavier, um, fill in more comfort in dishes like meatballs and mashed potatoes and, and pies and all that stuff. Um, heavy pasta dishes is more so winter me. So all of that to say is I'm, I'm realizing that we are getting to that season where I'm going to want to eat more comfort and warm in bone, secure bones kind of food. And it's nice to be able to get that stuff done now and kind of, kind of start preparing some of that stuff now so that come fall and come winter, um, I've just taken a lot of burden off of the task in a few months. So I, I've kind of done the heavy lifting now. Um, it's the, the project, whatever that will be, whether it's I'm making, I'm making cake or I'm making brownies or whatever, will be just much more enjoyable then. Um, because I've taken the kind of annoying part of measuring and getting out the dry ingredients and measuring the dry ingredients. I've gotten rid of that already. And it'll be a much more pleasant experience in the future. So thank you guys for joining me. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, friends.